Welcome to First Do No Harm with Massachusetts Citizens for Life board member and physician, Dr. Mark Rollo. This broadcast will focus on medical ethics from a Catholic perspective and address abortion, physician-assisted suicide, contraception, natural family planning, IVF, healthcare proxy, and other topics. Please be advised that this show may not be appropriate for children under 13. Hello and welcome back to First Do No Harm, a show about medical ethics from a Catholic perspective. I am Dr. Mark Rollo. Today I'll continue the discussion regarding modern natural family planning, which is just one of the fruits of Humanae Vitae. And I will play the third and final part of my interview with Kathy Rivett, a Creighton Model Method natural family planning teacher and teacher of teachers who has trained natural family planning instructors all around the world. Let us first begin, as always, with prayer. For as stated by the U.S. Catholic bishops, only with prayer, prayer that storms the heavens for justice and mercy, prayer that cleanses our hearts and souls, will the culture of death that surrounds us today be replaced with a culture of life. O God, you are are a communion of love. You willed to have your son born into an earthly icon of Trinitarian love, the Holy Family. We ask your Holy Spirit to bless all families with abundant, self-giving love and life. We ask this in Jesus' name, Amen. Let us resume the interview with Kathy Rivett as she discusses more of the amazing medical applications of modern natural family planning, as well as its wonderful relationship-building characteristics. Just the other day, I got a call from a woman who wants to be a grandmother. <laughs> Yeah. And her daughter and son-in-law are uh, have been to, uh, for evaluations, medical evaluations. They haven't been able to find anything, um, any reason why they're not conceiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they don't want to pursue any, any of the artificial reproductive technologies mm-hmm. like IVF. And right. they don't want to participate in destroying life in order to create life. Right. And so the mother called me, and we had a conversation. Now, and then the daughter called, and they're coming um, to learn the method. And when somebody comes in, their history is they don't know why they're not getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. I always feel a little bit of like, oh, good, because we look at things others don't look at. Mm-hmm. And so we have a lot of success with people who come who. They don't know why they're not getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. It could it could be as simple as a very limited mucus. Mm-hmm. By that meaning, the quality of the cervical mucus is such that it's um, it's uh, not really doing the job. And so, and then of course it depends on why it's limited. Um, if there's no biomarkers looking like she might be at risk for. Uh, miscarriage, a practitioner like myself can simply recommend a simple vitamin protocol that mm-hmm. often really helps to improve the mucus. Yep. And uh, in my practice over the years, I've had two cases where couples have even had failed IVF yep. and yep. just simply had limited mucus and recommended the vitamin protocol and they were pregnant within a couple cycles. And if it's not just simply that there could be a biological reason why and so that's when uh we partner with our uh napro medical consultants Mm -hmm. something that you and i have done over the years right i've been able to refer 
my clients to you and knowing that you're not going to put them on the pill to yes. correct a problem that right. they have. Right. And also knowing you're going to look at their chart and you're going to be able to understand mm -hmm. their chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's it's sad uh, when women will come to me and I'll look at their chart and, and they say, "Wow, you're really lo looking at the chart." So I go to other doctors and they just kind of glance at it and poo poo it and <laughs> toss it aside and and said, "I'm going to send you to IVF," you know, and uh. it's and it's it's incredible, you know, how much of a cookbook OBGYN can be because uh, they'll often uh. say. Well, okay, you're not getting pregnant. Um, take your temperature. Let's see if you're ovulating. And then if you haven't gotten pregnant in, in, uh, within three months, I'm going to send you to IVF. There's no, there's no investigation. There's no drawing of blood. There may, there may be a, a couple of baseline things, check their thyroid and stuff like that. But they, they are, even if they end up not achieving pregnancy, um, they are so grateful that somebody... Yes. took the time to look into it and try to explain what's going on. That's right. And uh, you're right about, uh, you know, the cookbook thing. Yeah. In fact, they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it would be so much easier if they, and uh, that, I suppose, puts a task on us to uh, do what you're doing right now, Dr. Rolo, mm -hmm. doing, getting, the, getting the word out, you right. know, so to speak. I had a, a woman, uh, well, a couple that came once and they were engaged. Um, she was in her, well, she was a little older than 35. And neither one of them had been married before. They were so excited to have found each other because they both wanted um, to be married and have a family. And so they were very much looking forward to that. And, uh, she told her doctor, you know, I'm getting married and we're really excited. We want to have children right away. And the doctor right there wrote a referral to Boston IVF <laughs> because he said, at your age, you're probably going to have a hard time. So why don't you not waste time? Why don't wow. you just go see them? Wow. They had never even had intercourse yet. Jeez. And he was referring them to Boston IVF. Amazing. And she was how old? She was like 36. Oh, geez, like that's real old, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's sad, you know, initially you get a little upset and angry, but it's also very sad. It, it is. Because it is. people don't know what they don't know. No. And I'm sure, I'm sure this doctor's thinking, oh, this couple, they'd make good parents. How can I help them? She's probably going to have a hard time. Yeah. You know, here's yeah. this referral. Yeah. So. Well, the, the flip side of that is I'll... Uh, and, you know, even though 36 doesn't sound old, you know, technically once you get past 35, your your fertility starts to decline, which is why I always tell women if they're, you know, approaching 30, I'll tell them, you know, don't, don't wait too long. But I've had a couple of patients who come in, and they're in their late 30s. They're approaching 40. And okay. they say, well, um, you know, I thought we could get pregnant at 40 and I'm finding out that I'm not getting pregnant and and they're yeah. they're and they're asked they're asking at that point to be um referred for for IVF which I don't do because as you know it's uh it's in a very right. abortive uh technology like you said at the beginning then they create life they fertilize a lot of eggs in a petri dish and discard most of them right so it is uh, you know, it is very uh, gratifying to be able to help them without doing the uh, knee-jerk uh, referral. Right, right. It is, for sure. You know, I, 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 when I first contacted you to, to uh, ask you to, to do this, it was um, you told me that you were about to teach a course in Australia. <laughs> You want, That's right. You want to say it's a little bit about... this week. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you, and you've... Uh, maybe you could say a few words about that, and, and also the fact that you've taught this um, literally around the world. Right. Yeah, that's been a, a real blessing in my life, and it's certainly nothing I pursued at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, right. So being a fertility care educator, I've been able to establish my own great model uh, accredited education program. The whole process is a 13-month process 
that involves two in-person, one-week education phases mm -hmm. and followed by two uh, supervised practicum where they're assigned a faculty supervisor and they work very closely as they teach about 18 couples over the course of the year. And it's um, very standardized and um, you know, I've done a number of programs in the States and, you know, and, and abroad and uh, so anyhow, they um, in Australia, um, they in Queensland, Australia, they having their first, um, I shouldn't say the first education program because others have brought it there, maybe for one program, then come home. Mm -hmm. But this is um, a, a, will be a permanent Australian based program mm -hmm. with an Australian educator. The original plan was one of us would be there with her during the course of the week as she does her first program. Mm -hmm. But with the pandemic, that uh, has not been possible. Right. So myself and another educator, Margaret Howard, have been assisting her. One of us have been online with her through Zoom throughout the, the whole week. And I'll be giving four lectures in total. Mm -hmm. So, which is really, it's really very neat because no matter where you give this program, the people who come to learn this, you know, they're they're so motivated right, to right. do what's good and what's healthy and uh, for families and for marriages and uh, provide options other than hormonal contraceptives. Right. And so there are four this week. There, there would be more, but their borders were closed so it's mm -hmm. only more local people that could mm -hmm. attend and four really dedicated wonderful women and uh it's all through zoom yeah. so i can see them they can see me i'm sharing my screen yeah they're able to ask questions i can see when the hand goes up <laughs> right it's, it's really a, a great and tool so it's uh yeah next mm. week a part of the training for to be a practitioner involves a site visit where your supervisor goes to your location mm -hmm. and observes you teaching and reviews your files. And during the pandemic, that has not been possible. Right. And uh, next week, I'll be participating in a site visit in Gibraltar. Oh, wow. And the, uh, the, the that student's supervisor is an educator in training from Nigeria. He's mm. a physician mm -hmm. from Nigeria. Wow. And there's a hospital in Lokoja, Nigeria, who's um, really made this a priority. They want to train their doctors, their nurses, their couples. They've um, taken an auditorium in the hospital, and they're calling it Fertility Hall. They've dedicated it to mm. the program. They're building a hospitality center for students and um you know, so it's really quite exciting. Yeah. You know, we've done programs in Ireland and Poland, uh, Canada, yeah. and Mexico. And then um, very soon, it was supposed to be in the spring, but I think they postponed it to the fall in Mexico. Yeah. They're having their very first program. Up until now, we've brought the program there. Now they're having their own because they have their own educators and medical consultants who are trained and yeah. so they're receiving their own certification and taking off so yeah it's really uh it's very, very exciting. exciting yeah it's very exciting and you know yeah, uh, taiwan it's all been really these materials have all been translated into long chinese and to french and to polish so. amazing uh yeah it, the interesting thing is uh, Dr. Hill just didn't sit there and say, let's bring it here or let's translate it into Polish and bring it to Poland. It's these countries have come to him and said, we want to have this. How can we do this? Yeah. Yeah. And he's worked with them to help them establish their own program and train the people yeah. that uh, they need. So it's, it's like the pearl of great price, right? Which. <laughs> Once you learn about That's it, right. you 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 want to have it. You know, you mentioned about a program like this getting the word out. You know, we used to say, and it's probably true still, that uh, this that natural family planning, especially the Creighton model, is one of the best kept 
secrets and we're we're right. we're trying not to make it a secret right um, what do you think is is um behind it being still not really out there as as much as it should be i i think part of it is people they think they know what it is mm-hmm. but they don't so they don't bother to look any further yeah uh, the very first time i heard the term natural family planning um, I was at a Bible study, and somebody said there'll be a talk on natural family planning. And I turned around to walk out of the room thinking, oh, my mother taught me that. Ten, yeah, ten, ten. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But then I thought, well, how can you have a whole program on that? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went back and said, what is this? Yeah. But it's, I thought I knew what it was, yeah. but I didn't. Well, and it's... then I, I, I think, too— um, like I said, people don't know what it is, or mm-hmm. they think it's Catholic birth control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's obviously, the Catholic Church and couples who practice Catholic uh, faith are very drawn to this. But mm-hmm. not only Catholics, we have a medical consultant in Cairo, Egypt, who's also a practitioner mm-hmm. and in teaching Muslim couples there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, but I... I don't know really why it is, but it yeah. is growing. It is changing. We have a program at Catholic Medical Center up here in Manchester, New Hampshire, and it started out with uh, one doctor, an OBGYN, who um, went to Omaha and got the special training. And when they opened the practice there, you know, most most programs or businesses will have a five-year plan or I think it was a three-year plan of goals that they need to meet they met their goals in the first like six months wow and within the years before the year was over they hired a second OBGYN and a couple other mid-level providers and they took over two two office spaces next to them Mm. because people want this yes yeah they yeah. want it. Yeah. They they don't know what it is, but when they hear about what it is, they do, um, they do want it. Yeah, and when 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 you say that people think they know what it is, um, that's true. I, I I put myself in that category. Um, unlike you and Doctor Hilgers, when Humani Vitae came out, I didn't read it. I just listened to what other people were saying, and they were kind of you know, poo-pooing it and say, oh, yeah, that's uh, Catholic birth control and it doesn't work and it's the rhythm method. Okay. And, and I really didn't, didn't um, uh, start to uh, really look at it until I was in medical school. And, yeah. uh, and I had already been, you know, married about, um, I guess it was seven years. And uh, I told the story on a previous show that, that I was, uh, my wife and I were double teamed by the Holy Spirit that... Uh, that I, a fellow physician, was practicing it, and I thought, boy, that's weird. This, you know, this man of science <laughs> is doing this. He was also a teacher. He was a teacher of the symptothermal method, and at the same time, um, oh, yes. my wife was uh, met a woman who was practicing it. So we learned that, and then I left the. Um, I was in the Air Force at the time. Left the Air Force, and came back to uh, Massachusetts, and that's when I met. Um, Dr. Paul Carpentier, who practiced up in Gardner, and um, of course you know him well. He's now yes. practicing down in in uh, Long Island. But he said, he said, "Oh, you do simple thermal method, huh?" And I said, "Yeah." He says, uh, "You should go to Omaha." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did about thirty years ago, and um, right. and that was a, a a good choice. I guess we have about just five or ten minutes left. I wondered. Uh, is there anything I'm leaving out that you want to talk about, or do you have any any favorite stories about uh, patients or or educators? That you know? well, I know sometimes we get so um, involved and interested in uh, NAPRO technology, you know, and the science, and which is wonderful, you know, and that's that's something that draws a lot of people to this. But uh, another big part of what we do with clients is um, something we call SPICE. Mm -hmm. And SPICE is an acronym that stands for Spiritual, Physical, Intellectual, Creative, and Emotional Aspects Mm -hmm. of their Relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's just um, 
such a blessing over the years to watch this develop in couples. Yes. And it's, of course, if, so, if a couple's using a natural method and they do not want to become pregnant, and it's a time of fertility for them. I don't mm-hmm. just say the woman because the couple is fertile. Right. It's their fertile time. Mm-hmm. Well, how do they manage those times? Mm-hmm. Are they going to feel deprived or annoyed or mm-hmm. upset? Or, you know, are they going to use that time to show their love and their caring for yes. each other, and their friendship in other ways? And so it's something that we, we talk about. We have a little exercise that we do. And we um, we don't delve into their personal relationship, but we encourage them. And I like to ask couples to, I give them examples, what I call spice yeah. stories. Mm-hmm. And then I give them a homework, you know, to come back the next follow-up, you know, with their own spice stories. Mm-hmm. I remember working with a, a couple and they had three young children. They were very busy, tired, you yeah. know, <laughs> and... <laughs> You know, the baby wasn't sleeping at night. They both worked, and uh, they came to learn the method. And when I started to talk spice, they were like, oh, Kathy, we don't have time for that. We're just (laughs) so busy. Just tell us what we need to know. (laughs) We don't have time for that. And I said, well, I know that I can tell you guys have this, you know, and just being more aware of it. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, no, we don't. So I gave them some examples, and she said, she looked at them, and she said, you know, she said, every morning you wake me up with a cup of coffee before mm-hmm. you go to work. Yeah, that's that's a good example of spice. And I said, spice. well, that's spice. And yeah. then she said, and then when I go to brush my teeth, you put toothpaste on the toothbrush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, when you did your, you did it for me. Yeah. And I yeah. said, and how does that make you feel? And she said, she just sort of looked at him, you know, with all this love. And she said, that you were thinking about me in yeah. your rush this morning. Yeah. So yeah. it's all these little things, and I love collecting yeah. these spice stories. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, if, uh, the the parish that I go to, uh, there are a number of families there that over the years I've been teaching for a long time. You know, I watch the families grow. And a few weeks ago, I was just sitting there at mass, and I was observing one particular young couple and i i know that they um you know that they've come through the program and and i thought what an example of spice because they were sitting there they had a little boy who's probably 10 a little mm-hmm. girl who's five and it was the homily and the the husband just sort of put his arm around his wife's shoulder and they sat there listening to the homily and then i looked and the little boy put his arm around his sister's shoulder <laughs> And yeah. I thought, now that's yeah. that's something he's mimicking yeah. for what he sees at home. Yeah, that's great learning. So many of these little things, and I think couples who use a natural method, they put a little extra time and energy yes. yeah. into this yeah. whole spice, or they they should, and we encourage them to do that. Uh, one couple. Um, when they came, I asked them, like I do most couples, what made you choose this? And she said, well, uh, the church that we go to, there's a family there, and I know they come here. They're, they're your clients. Mm-hmm. And she said, we were, I was sitting there in church waiting for Mass to start, and this family came in, and the church was getting pretty full. They couldn't all sit together. So dad took a couple kids and went to a pew. Mom took a couple kids, went to another pew. And she said, I'm just sitting there watching them. She said, and when they got settled, dad turned to look and see where is mom. (laughs) And she was looking for him. And when they saw each other, she said they gave each other a wink and a wave, a smile, just a wink and a wave. And she said, I sat there with tears coming down my cheek because I don't remember the last time my husband looked for me in a crowded room Mm, mm -hmm. and she said, I just know these couples that do this is different. Yeah. Right. Well, those are great. Those are great stories. I I have to say that just my own personal experience that my wife and I got, got so much closer just using, using the method, you know, she would, she would make observations and she would tell me, I would write the observations on the chart 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, you know, I knew when she was going to get her period before she did. <laughs> and in fact, uh, uh, one, you know, my, my wife fortunately was very regular and one, one month she was late. And I said, well, we, we know, I, I'm not sure if she did a pregnancy test or not, but, but um, I knew something was up and, and, sh- and she had just had jury duty. And uh, and different different things affect people differently. And she was really stressed out about jury duty. And she wasn't selected. And after she was not selected, she had her period. So <laughs> so you really you really get to know each other uh, really well. In fact, the 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 number of people who uh, have divorce who use natural family planning is is very very small. That's right. Well, yeah, okay. before we end, if uh, one of our listeners out there wants to find out more uh, about this, what would be the best uh, initial step for them to take? Okay, well, um, Fertility Care Centers of America, their website, you can find where the closest fertility care center is to you geographically. Mm-hmm. It's fertilitycare.org. Right, fertilitycare.org. And then there's also the St. Paul the Sixth Institute in Omaha, Nebraska. But the one way to get there is naprotechnology.com. Right. And NAPRO stands for Natural Procreative Technology. Right, right. Dr. Hilgers has always said that... Um, he likes the word procreate because it brings God into it. Right, right. We're right. creating together. Uh, right. So good. So fertilitycare.org right. and naprotechnology.com. Right. Well, thanks, Kathy. I really appreciate um, the time you've given to this, and hopefully uh, our listeners uh, learned a lot. Well, thank you, and thank you for the opportunity. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah, thank you. This concludes my interview with Kathy Rivett. And once again, to find an instructor near you, go to fertilitycare.org. And to learn more about the amazing medical applications of the fertility care system, go to naprotechnology.com. Until next time, remember, we should always treat life with care and respect, and at the very least, we should first do no harm. Thank you for tuning in to First Do No Harm. Dr. Rolo welcomes your questions and comments. You may contact him at markrolo978 at gmail.com. That's M-A-R-K-R-O-L-L-O 978 at gmail.com. Thank you, and until next week, remember, first, do no harm.